yeah uh, so also you have uh, you have a, a really diverse skill set and you have been associated with robotics for such a long time so you can probably give a good view on uh, what are the skills one should uh, have for robotics of course you know uh, the the tools tools is a different thing and skills are uh, skills is a different thing so uh, what are the skills that you know one must have to have uh, to be a good roboticist yeah um, so two of them, I think we already touched on. One was just the systems thinking. You need to have a baseline level of systems thinking because mm -hmm. in robotics, especially so, you don't have the luxury of saying, oh, that's not my area of expertise, therefore let me ignore it. You need you need to understand a lot of different things because robots are complicated systems. That It is, it is what it is. Um, another skill that we already talked about was the whole, like, don't just learn tools or languages for the sake of it. Don't take a tools-focused approach. Take a problem-focused approach. Uh, I'll I'll leave it at that. But you know, a lot of a lot of newcomers will ask things like, "Oh, what's the best programming language to learn? You know, is it C plus plus? Is it MATLAB? Is it Python?" It really depends on what you want to do. I mean, just I would say, what are you trying to solve, right? If you're yes. trying to write if you're trying to write a piece of software that goes in a microcontroller, then mm. you're probably going to want to use C. You know, if you're and so on. Um, Although one software tool that I would recommend everyone learn in robotics is ROS. Uh, my, my, actually, my current boss at Boss Dynamics said this really well, and I want to share it with people, is that for most robotics companies out there, if you're working on software, even if they're not using ROS, there is going to be something like it. So it's really good to just have that knowledge of like, you know, splitting up your yeah. software into different distributed nodes and serializing messages or serializing data in the form of messages and so on. Um, I a think framework of that. framework of any uh, sort, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's that. I mean, you know, my advice is focused on the software side because that's what I've been doing most of my time. Yeah. The third one is, and I got this from a uh, a book about the Google software engineering process, which is I forget who writes it, but it's called the Flamingo Book. It's a book with a flamingo oh. on it. Um, that software, like programming, does not equal to software engineering. If you are okay. a good coder there is still a lot more in being like an effective software engineer. Um, you know, and, and I, I put that as a word of warning for like only doing hacker rank, for example, or, or like Kaggle or competitive programming. There is a lot more in it. So I would recommend anyone that wants to pursue software engineering to also learn about like the, the supplemental things in software development, like how to use source control, like Git, um, yeah. how to unit test your code, continuous integration, uh, using containers, like, you know, like how to use Docker. Uh, all these things are going to make you really powerful and kind of understand how your where your code belongs in a in a bigger system. So even if you know that is a completely separate thing from just being a really good programmer or algorithm developer, and both of those things uh, you should have under your belt. Yeah. 